Hello students, welcome to the discussion of the new MCQs, particularly on the topic of the rickets. In this, we'll be discussing the MCQs on the rickets and I'm trying to frame the MCQs according to the latest pattern because as you all know, the number of MCQs in the NEET PG, they have been decreased from 300 to 200. So what we expect is that you'll be getting more of the clinical oriented MCQs. So they will be basically mixing two or three subjects together. So in the future videos, I'll be trying to make the MCQs like this only. So here directly moving on to the first question, what it says is a six year old boy was brought with deformity as shown in the figure. So if you see in the first figure, this is particularly is the genu velgum. And if you see here, this is the genu verum. Deformity is there. His sister also had similar deformity, gradually increasing since three years of age. Height is below the third percentile and there are multiple dental abscesses. Mother also had similar history. So even if we do not know what is the diagnosis, what the clues we take from the question, mother is having the disease, right? And from the mother, both the son and the daughter, they are having the disease. Right, And the mother is only transmitting the X chromosome both to the son as well as to the daughter. So it is most likely a X link disorder. That is one thing. And if you see in the figure here, if you are able to appreciate here in the figure, one is genu valgum, one is genu varum. So what it means to say, it is a rickets and that is X linked and it is most likely a X linked dominant disorder. It is a X-linked dominant disorder, right? As both son and daughter are affected, so most likely it is a X-linked dominant disorder and it is a X-linked hypophosphatamic rickets. It is a X-linked hypophosphatamic rickets, right? Now in the X-linked hypophosphatamic rickets, what additional clues are given in the question? The additional clues which are given is the short stature. That is also one of the clue. And the another clue which is given is the dental abscess. There is the dental abscess, right? So now here we discuss what exactly is the pathology in this X-linked hypophosphatamic rickets. There is expression of PHEX gene due to which there is increased amount of fibroblast growth factor 23. There is increased amount of fibroblast growth factor 23. What does it cause is this inhibits the this inhibits the reabsorption of phosphorus in kidney. This inhibits the reabsorption of phosphorus in kidney. So what will happen? there will be increased urine phosphorus and there will be decreased serum phosphorus. So the one thing you get is the decreased serum phosphorus. Therefore, the nomenclature of the disease is the hypophosphatamic rickets. Secondly, it inhibits the enzyme 1-alpha hydroxylase. And if it inhibits the enzyme 1-alpha hydroxylase, what will happen is there is decreased amount of 125-dihydroxycholecalciferol. Cholecalciferol, that is the calcitriol, right? So this is the basic pathogenesis. If I take this and I apply this in the question, what it says is the parathormone level are increased. No, PTH level is normal in the case of X-linked hypophosphatamic rickets. 25-hydroxycholecalciferol is not decreased, serum calcium is not decreased, but it is very true that the serum phosphorus is decreased, right? Direct question, just an integration, and that is a case of X-linked hypophosphatamic rickets. Moving on to the next question, three-year-old child was diagnosed as having rickets. Cholecalciferol has been given twice, but no response is seen. On examination, there is low calcium and increased PTH level. Out of the following, the possible cause is. Now, what does this imply? A child was having the rickets. You have given cholecalciferol. Again, there was no response. You repeat cholecalciferol. Again, there is no response. So, this becomes a case of 
वाइटमिन डी रेजिस्टेंट रिकेट्स वाइटमिन डी रेजिस्टेंट रिकेट्स राइट और रिफ्रैक्टरी रिकेट्स नाउ द थिंग यू नीड टू नो इज वाइटमिन डी रेजिस्टेंट रिकेट्स डज नॉट मीन दैट दिस कैन नॉट बी करेक्टेड एट ऑल इट सिंपली मीन्स इज इट कैन नॉट बी करेक्टेड बाई गिविंग कोली कैल्सिफिर दैट इज द थिंग इट इज अ क्लिनिकल डायग्नोसिस सो यू कैन नॉट करेक्ट इट बाई गिविंग दी कोली कैल्सी फिर ऑल नो इफ यू सी इन दी वाइटमिन डी रेजिस्टेंट रिकेट्स वाइटमिन डी रेजिस्टेंट रिकेट्स वट कैन बी द पॉसिबल कॉजेस वन वेयर देर इज इंक्रीज पी टी एच लेवल सेकेंड देयर इज नॉर्मल पी टी एच लेवल एंड देयर इज डिक्रीज सीरम फॉस्फोरस and third it is the normal pth and normal phosphorus normal pth and the normal phosphorus increased pth this particularly includes is the chronic renal failure this includes vitamin d dependent rickets 1a and 1b it includes vitamin d dependent rickets 2a and 2b so these are the three conditions which are the vitamin d resistant rickets where there is increase uh, pth level and they do not respond to cholecalciferol in the second group normal pth and decrease serum phosphorus this includes is the x linked hypophosphatemic rickets x linked hypophosphatemic rickets this includes is the tumor induced and in the tumor induced this includes is the heme angioparesitoma this includes is the heme angioparesitoma and this includes is the fibroma fibroma third is the mccune albright syndrome mccune albright syndrome and in all of this three in all of this three there is increased amount of fibroblast growth factor 23 and the role i have already explained in the previous mcq what does the fibroblast growth factor 23 causes and fourth cause here is the proximal renal tubular acidosis proximal renal tubular acidosis normal pth and normal phosphorus that is seen in the distal renal tubular acidosis so this is in short regarding the classification of the vitamin d resistant rickets so if i apply this here what i am being to say there is low calcium and increased pth right in mccune there is normal pth in tumor induced normal pth in distal renal tubular acidosis normal pth so answer comes out to be the choice number a it is the vitamin d dependent rickets type 1 question number 3 already we have done and the the previous explanation based on this only all are the causes of vitamin d resistant rickets associated with increased pth level so please remember chronic renal failure vitamin d dependent rickets 1 vitamin d dependent rickets 2 this three are particularly the cause this three are particularly the cause right so if the question asked except here this is the answer that is the x linked hypophosphatemic rickets because here there is the normal pth level moving on to the question number 4 all are the causes of vitamin d deficiency in children except now if you see basically you all know vitamin d there is cholecalciferol and this cholecalciferol is converted to 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol which is converted to 125 dihydroxy cholecalciferol and from the diet it comes via ergo cholecalciferol ergo cholecalciferol is present in the diet now what can be the possible causes of vitamin d deficiency that can be the dietary deficiency one cause that can be there second cause can be decreased exposure to sunlight because cholecalciferol it is produced from 7 dehydro cholesterol third cause can be the fat mal absorption because ergo cholecalciferol is fat soluble so therefore it is true cystic fibrosis 
there will be fat malabsorption, there will be vitamin D deficiency. Then cholecalciferol to 25 is converted in the liver and 25 to 125 is converted into the kidney. So if there is a chronic liver disease, that will also lead to the vitamin D deficiency. Then can phenobarbiton lead to vitamin D deficiency? Yes, phenobarbiton is a hepatic enzyme inducer drug. Hepatic enzyme inducer drug and it can convert 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol into inactive metabolite. It can convert 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol into inactive metabolite. And if this becomes inactive, what will happen particularly? There will be no production of 125 and that will cause rickets. So phenobarbiton can very well cause rickets. And we have asked the answer except. So the answer comes out to be here. None of the above. Moving on to the last question. 8 month old male child is brought to the OPD with complaints of dry scaly skin around the oral cavity. Around the oral cavity. On examination, there is conjunctivitis nephritis, glossitis and stomatitis. Child was exclusively breastfed for 6 months and now on top feeding with cow's milk. Right? Lab investigation required for the diagnosis is. Now when we start thinking of this question, now skin manifestation, they can be seen in vitamin C deficiency also, in the zinc deficiency also. Right? And here mostly we have given this. But there is one identity that is the cow's milk protein allergy or intolerance. Now in the cow's milk protein intolerance, mostly there is presence of colitis and there is bloody diarrhea. There is bloody diarrhea. So getting the skin manifestations, that is not an unusual presentation. So that's rule out the choice number one. Then the serum ascorbate level. Right, serum ascorbate level can present with the skin manifestation, but there will be no glossitis, there will be no nephritis, no conjunctivitis. And remember, breast milk contains adequate amount of vitamin C. So that is not going to cause vitamin C deficiency, but the cow's milk can cause, but the cows in that case, you will not get all these features. So this rules out this serum ascorbate level. Vitamin B12. Well, already vitamin B12 is present in the food of animal origin only and it can present with these symptoms of glossitis and stomatitis but not other symptoms. So the right answer to this goes in favor of the serum zinc level and you should remember the dermatological manifestations of the zinc deficiency. In the zinc deficiency there can be vesicobolus, eczematous or dry scaly or soriform skin lesions. Important to be remembered is the symmetrically distributed and they are distributed mainly in the perioral area, in the acral area and the perineal areas apart from the cheeks, knees and the elbows. Right? But this is to be remembered, they are symmetrically distributed. Here are some of the images. This is the involvement of the perineal area. This is if you are seeing involvement in the lower limbs which is seen and this is on the elbow. Right? So these are some of the features which are seen in the zinc deficiency. Clear? So this was the discussion of the MCQs on the rickets and the zinc deficiency. Thank you all. Thank you so much.